An estimated one in three adults suffers from chronic insomnia. If persistent, it can result in all kinds of health problems. But trying to get a good night's sleep is often easier said than done. So what's causing your insomnia and what do we need to do to fix it? We are joined by Dr. Sheetal Dakaria, author of Break the Chronic Pain Cycle. Good morning to you. Thank you for joining me this morning. You're welcome. Good morning. So your book is called Break the Chronic Pain Cycle. And before we get into the insomnia, I found it interesting that you said there's a link between chronic insomnia and pain. Tell me about that. Sure. So many of my patients actually think that it's the pain that is causing their insomnia, and that's why they can't sleep. But actually, studies have shown that insomnia by itself is an independent risk factor for having pain because it increases your body's pain sensitivity, meaning that the same stimulus in someone that hasn't had a good night's sleep, um, they're more likely to have pain than someone that has slept a good seven to nine hours recommended uh, sleep. Okay, now let's get right to this because I want to make sure we get all of these in. I know a lot of people are losing sleep these days, but you say there are at least five hidden causes of insomnia. So let's go through your list. The first one is wine. Yeah, so many people do use wine or some alcohol to fall asleep and they think, oh, that wine makes me sleep better. And although wine and alcohol are sedatives, meaning that they do help you lose consciousness faster, you actually are not sleeping better. So what alcohol does is it impairs your REM or a rapid eye movement sleep and leads to disrupted sleep cycles. So you're not having a restorative night's sleep. And actually that's why when you have some alcohol, you wake up the next day and you're feeling tired. So I know this isn't a popular recommendation, but instead of that nightcap, I recommend recommend you drink some water, maybe some herbal tea, like some lavender chamomile tea that will actually help you sleep better and feel better the next day. Okay, next on your list uh, is uh, medications, right? Correct. Many medications, and these are very common medications, can actually cause difficulty sleeping. Some of those being blood pressure medications, a few antidepressants do it, steroid medications. So take a look at your medication list, see the side effects. If insomnia is listed as one, have a conversation with your doctor. Maybe you just need to change the time that you're taking the medicine or change the medicine altogether, but have a conversation with them first and see if there may be a link. Great suggestion. Next one is sleep apnea very common and very underdiagnosed. So if you find yourself sleepy during the day, maybe someone has said you snore loudly at night, there's something called the stop bang questionnaire. You can find it online or on my website. You take this short questionnaire and if you meet risk factors for sleep apnea, you should talk to your doctor and actually get a sleep study. It's really important that you don't leave that sleep apnea untreated. Okay, and the next one you say don't eat late night meals. What happens with that? A couple factors happen with eating late at night. Now, the first thing is what you're eating. When you're eating sugary foods, heavy meals, your body is going to be working at night to actually metabolize that food instead of restoring your body. So that's the first thing. Another thing is many people suffer from something called heartburn or acid reflux. Now, anything you're eating, if you eat late at night and then you go to bed, that reflux is going to be triggered and impair your sleep. The final thing too is that actually what you're eating matters if it has caffeine in it, like chocolate, which is a common late night snack yeah. will impair your sleep also. Yeah, you don't think so about that. So kind of the that. sweet spot is three hours. Try not to eat about three hours before bedtime. Okay, three hours before bedtime. Okay, so lack of sunshine, that's something we can all relate to here in Chicago. What do you do about that? Absolutely, except for today when the sun right. is shining brightly, which is awesome. Um, but most of the time, especially in winter, we here in Chicago, we're not getting enough sunlight. And just like you've probably heard at nighttime, you need to turn down the lights, avoid the blue light of screens. Your circadian rhythm, that's your body's innate ability to regulate its sleep-wake cycle, actually needs light in the morning as well for you to sleep well at night. So try to walk outside today, get some sun every day, about 15 minutes in the morning would be ideal to try to help set your sleep cycle at night and if you can't do that something called a light box here's one that I got about $25 on Amazon use it for about 15 minutes in the morning as you're getting ready that's actually going to improve not only your mood during the winter months but also improve your sleep at night and then how about a supplement does vitamin D help because that's the sunshine vitamin so with sleep, it's actually really important that you actually try to get that, that natural light um, or some sort of light therapy more so than anything else. So vitamin D is certainly important. Many of us do have deficiencies of vitamin D here in Chicago. So certainly make sure you're checking your levels and maintaining your vitamin D, but really try to get that natural sunlight also. Dr. Dakaria, fun conversation with you this morning. Some great tips. And for our viewers, you can go to revitalizemedcenter.com. Thank you for joining me. We appreciate your time. You're welcome. Of course, thank you. Coming up on Good Day.